Yeah, so I recently moved from Berkeley here on the left to Utrecht. These are actual laser beams. Nothing is photoshopped here. And this was for the 375th anniversary of the uh, university. So there's a three kilo kilometer uh, away, there's this campus in Utrecht that shines these laser beams onto the central uh, bell tower. So a pretty amazing sight. Fortunately, uh, it's not there anymore. Um, but today I'll be focusing on um, identifying host factors involved in uh, SEGA sting activation. And uh, just, uh, just for the record, I'm not going to talk about the legendary singer, but the legendary protein, uh, the stimulator of interfering genes or sting. And sting together with the enzyme SEGAS detects cytosolic DNA and then uh, mounts a pro-inflammatory immune response. And uh, this response is crucial uh, for the resistance to virus infections. And this includes both RNA and DNA virus infections. Uh, for example, um, mice lacking sting or a sea gas become highly susceptible uh, to HSV-1 infections. And also in the context uh, of the immune response to tumor cells, sting plays a crucial role. Um, so mice injected with uh, T cell sensitive B16 SIY tumors, um, they cannot mount a proper immune response in the absence of sting and those tumor cells will uh, continue to grow. Um, so here's a very simplified overview of the SEGA sting uh, pathway. So as we all know, DNA is usually compartmentalized in the nucleus or in mitochondria. However, upon certain insults, and it can be uh, bacterial infections or viral infections or DNA damage, uh, DNA can accumulate in uh, the cytosol. And this can be recognized uh, by the enzyme uh, SEGAS. And SEGAS then produces this cyclic dinucleotide or CDN you will hear about a lot uh, about CDNs this talk, uh, and a particular one called CGAMP from the building blocks ATP and GTP. So the CTN then, CDN then acts as a second messenger to activate uh, Sting. Sting then recruits the kinase TBK1, and this complex then activates the transcription factors IRF3 and NF-kappa B. Uh, and this results in the expression of uh, signaling molecules, including type one interference uh, on cytokines and chemokines. So in this situation, sting responds to uh, CDNs produced within the cell, but we know that uh, sting can also respond to cyclic dinucleotides uh, from the extracellular environment. And this is important in uh, certain tumor models where cancer cells have a lot of cytosolic DNA, which will then activate CGAS uh, to produce CGAMP. And CGAMP can then activate sting in different host cells uh, to produce type one interference. And this can activate uh, other immune cells, including natural killer cells to target and clear uh, the tumor cell. Well, certain tumors, they do not produce enough of these uh, uh, cyclic dinucleotides. And in those cases, you can inject uh, synthetic versions of CDNs directly into a tumor microenvironment. And one example I'm going to be talking about is uh, two prime, three prime RR cyclic diAMP. And for the sake of simplicity, I will refer to that as RRCDA. And injecting RRCDA into the tumor microenvironment will uh, induce an immune response uh, that will clear. Uh, tumors, and in this case, 41 uh, tumors are completely uh, gone upon injection. So in both cases, um, sting responds to cyclic dinucleotides from the extracellular environment. Uh, and because they, uh, CDNs are uh, hydrophilic, uh, they cannot easily uh, cross the plasma membrane. So we thought that there uh, has to be a transporter involved so that main um, focus of, my, of the first part of this talk is how do cyclic dinucleotides enter cells? Um, first, a little bit about those cyclic dinucleotides. So they are composed, all of them are composed of two nucleotide groups that are linked by their phosphate groups. 
so for example, uh, C-GAMP is composed of GMP and AMP that is linked via the two primes hydroxyl group of AMP and the three primes hydroxyl group of uh, GMP, uh, hence the name two prime, three prime C-GAMP. And this one is produced by C-GAS after DNA binding. So then we also have this synthetic um, analog uh, that I was uh, referring to previously. So this is composed all of two AMP molecules. It also has the same two, two primed, three primed linkage. This is important uh, for a, a high affinity sting binding. And in addition, it has some uh, modifications. It has a phosphorothioate group uh, that makes the uh, cyclic dinucleotide more resistant to phosphodiesterases and therefore uh, it's, it becomes more stable. And this one is currently being tested uh, in clinical trials as a cancer immunotherapy uh, agent. And then the other uh, CDN I'm gonna be talking about is three prime, three prime cyclic di-AMP, uh, which is a bacterial second messenger and can also activate sting. So to visualize uh, CDN, uh, stimulation in cells, uh, we generated a reporter that's composed of five interference stimulatory response elements, uh, followed by a mouse minimal interferon beta promoter that drives the expression of the uh, fluorescent protein TD tomato. So TD tomato can be induced via CDNs, which will go through sting and the transcription factor IRF3 or via type one interference, which will go through the uh, transcription factor STAT1, STAT2, and IRF9. And in both cases, the, the cell should turn red upon activation. So let's, let's see if that's indeed the case. So we um, expressed the uh, reporter in different cell lines. So B16 mouse melanoma cells, human haploid HEP1 cells, and THP1 uh, cells, which are human monocytic cells. So in control situation, there's hardly any TD tomato reporter uh, expression. However, if we stimulate the cells with interferon beta, you see a very nice induction of the reporter. And then we stimulate the cells with uh, cyclic dinucleotides, in this case, this uh, synthetic version. Don't really see anything happening in B16 and HAP1 cells, but the THP1 cells are, uh, become very responsive and turn on TD tomato. So we tested a number of other cell lines. Uh, interestingly, TSP1 is uh, uh, the most responsive cell line together with another monocytic cell line called U937. And they really show a very robust response to this uh, synthetic cyclic dinucleotide. So in CD and uh, TSP1 cells, this response uh, is, is nicely dose uh, dependent. And it's also completely dependent on the uh, on sting expression. So in sting knockout cells, there is just no reporter activation anymore uh, in the presence of uh, cyclic dinucleotides. So the, to identify uh, other factors besides sting that are important for activation of this reporter in THP1 cells, uh, we use a genome-wide uh, CRISPR eye screen for CDN signaling. And then we uh, wanted to identify factors that either suppress or promote CDN signaling. And hopefully we would identify a transporter involved in the uptake of cyclic dinucleotides. So we use this CRISPR eye system, which uh, like the conventional uh, uh, Cas9 system uh, uses a guide RNA to target a particular uh, region in the, in the genome. But in contrast to the conventional system, it doesn't cut, but it represses uh, transcription uh, via a coupled uh, repressor domain and therefore you will get a general uh, depletion of mRNA of your gene of interest. So the uh, advantage is that you will have a higher chance of identifying both essential and non-essential genes because you will have a knockdown and not a knockout and a knockdown might be less uh, lethal if it is an essential gene. But that's also the downside because you will only get a knockdown and not a knockout and therefore your phenotype might not be as robust as when you would use the conventional uh, CRISPR-Cas9 system. So the library that we used um, contains five guide RNAs per, uh, per gene, and we targeted approximately 20,000 genes in the human genome. So we have 100,000 guide RNAs, transduce them into THP1 cells, 
in such a way that we get one guide RNA per cell. And then we stimulated this library expressing cell, uh, cell line with um, cyclic dinucleotides, so either the synthetic version or a CGAMP. So we get a nice robust induction of the reporter. And next we sorted the cells into two populations. So one population that became hypo responsive to cyclic dinucleotide stimulation and one population that became hyper responsive to CDN stimulation. And we next deep sequenced uh, these populations to, uh, to find the guide RNAs uh, enriched in these different populations and compared them to a pre-sorted control. So one gene that we expected to be targeted in the hyper-responsive population is, well, a sting, but also IRF3, because IRF3 is directly upstream of the reporter. So knocking down IRF3 would reduce reporter activation. So that indeed seems to be the case, at least for this uh, guide RNA targeting IRF3. So this is highly enriched in the hypo-responsive population when you compare it to the background control especially when you compare it to the hyper-responsive population. So then we looked at the other 100,000 guide RNAs uh, targeting these 20,000 genes and produced uh, this volcano plot. So every dot that you see here is a gene. And on the right side, you can see which uh, genes were more frequently targeted in the hypo-responsive population, uh, hyper-responsive to the uh, synthetic cyclic dinucleotide. We can see that IRF3 is indeed one of the uh, most significant hits. So then we looked at uh, like the top 10 of uh, the uh, hit list and we were looking for a transporter. And indeed the second uh, hit is this transporter called SLC19A1, which is known as a folate transporter. So we repeated this screen, this time not with the synthetic cyclidonucleotide, but with CGAMP. Again, IRF3 is our top hit, directly downstream of Sting and upstream of the reporter. But again, this folate transporter SLC19A1 seems to be a major hit. So we were wondering, is this SLC19A1 also a CDN transporter? So first a little bit more about SLC19A1. It's also known as the reduced folate carrier. And it's a plasma membrane uh, transporter for uh, well, folate, but mainly reduced folates into mammalian cells. And it has a very high affinity uh, for the uh, reduced folate called 5-methyl tetrahydrofolic acid, which is the main circulating folate in, uh, in the bloodstream. And just to compare 5-methyl tetrahydrofolic acid to CGAMP, I don't really see any uh, obvious similarity. They're both small molecules and have some rings, um, but nothing really uh, obviously. Um, so then other things that we need to know about SLC19A1 is that it imports antifolates, including the drug methotrexate, and its import uh, can be blocked by the non-competitive inhibitor called sulfazalazine. And both methotrexate and sulfazalazine uh, are first line treatments for uh, a number of inflammatory diseases, including rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, and inflammatory bowel disease. So to look at the, um, the role of SLC19A1 in CDN activation, uh, we generated cell lines that uh, are depleted for SLC19A1 or IRF3 using CRISPR-I guide RNAs, and we confirmed the knockdown uh, using qPCRs. And then you stimulated the cells with cyclic dinucleotides. So in this situation here, we have cells expressing a control guide RNA stimulated with the synthetic CDN or CGAMP. You see nice in a T tomato induction reporter expression. If we knock down IRF3, uh, reporter expression is highly reduced. But also when we knock down SLC19A1, uh, the reporter induction is highly uh, dampened. But we use two, uh, one other guide per gene to, uh, to validate these results and then quantify that as you can see here. So in the case of stimulation with synthetic cyclic dinucleotides, there's a massive reduction in reporter activation when you deplete SLC19A1 from these cells. So then we stimulate the cells with the CGAMP, so the mammalian CDN. We also see a very nice uh, 
reduction in, uh, in, in immune activation. It's not as strong as for the synthetic variant. Bacterial CDNs are also not as stimulatory in the absence of SLC19A1. Uh, and then lastly, we also used a, a CDN independent way to um, induce reporter activation, uh, in this case, interferon beta. And there we don't really see any effects. So it seems the SLC19A1 is really specific for cyclic dinucleotides. So then we also use the conventional CRISPR-Cas9 system to completely knock out SLC19A1 from these cells. And we generated nine control clones and seven knockout clones. And again, uh, we see a nice reduction in immune activation when we knock out SLC19A1, both for the synthetic CDN and for CGAMP. Interestingly, we still see some residual activation in these cells that completely lack SLC19A1. And that suggests that other transporters may also play a role. So to further validate the role of SLC19A1, we also reintroduced it uh, into SLC19A1 depleted cells. And then we can nicely rescue uh, immune activation by uh, the synthetic CDN and also by CGAMP. But nothing really happens when you stimulate the uh, immune system using interferon beta. So then we overexpressed SLC19A1 in various cell lines that previously didn't really uh, show any responsiveness to CDNs. And then we can nicely see that if overexpressing SLC19A1 in certain cell lines, and especially K562 cells, 293T cells that overexpress sting, and C1R cells, they um, become very responsive to uh, cyclic dinucleotides as soon as you overexpress SLC19A1. So at least in those cell lines, it seems that their lack of response is in part due to the limiting expression of SLC19A1. <gasps> So next, um, we try to inhibit SLC19A1 using competitive and non-competitive inhibitors. And in this case here, we use, uh, again, this reduced folate called 5-methyl tetrahydrofolic acid, which is this natural substrate for SLC19A1 and a major form of reduced folate in the blood circulation. So added those two cells and stimulated the cells with, in this case, interferon beta. We don't see any reduction of the uh, immune activation by interferon beta in the presence of 5-metal THF. But interestingly, there's a dose-dependent effect when stimulating the cells with the synthetic cyclic dinucleotide or with C-GAMP. So then we did that same experiment, uh, but then with methotrexate, which is this anti-inflammatory drug, uh, although the mechanism of action is not completely clear. There, again, we don't really see any effects on the uh, immune activation by interferon beta, but activation by cyclic dinucleotides is uh, reduced in a dose-dependent fashion. And then lastly, we uh, use sulfazalazine, which is this other uh, uh, drug that's a non-competitive inhibitor of SLC19A1. It's also used as an anti-inflammatory drug in autoimmune uh, diseases. Uh, and we know that it, it inhibits NF-kappa B signaling, uh, but its mechanism of action is not completely clear. And here we see that sulfazalazine blocks uh, interferon beta, but also cyclic dinucleotide. So it's, it seems to have a more general effect on the induction of the reporter. So, so far we have, we have looked at reporter activation, but we also looked at uh, endogenous genes downstream of IRF3. So one of them is interferon beta one. So in control cells stimulated with the cyclic dinucleotides, there's a very nice induction of interferon beta. If you knock down IRF3, this induction is gone, but also when you knock down uh, SLC19A1, there is a uh, reduced induction of interferon beta. And this is also for uh, other genes, uh, including SS, uh, CXCL10 and CCL5. So next, we look directly at uh, sting activation itself and uh, also TBK1 and IRF3. Uh, so as said, uh, when you stimulate uh, cells with CDNs, you get phosphorylation of sting, which you can nicely see here, TBK1 and also IRF3. When you knock down IRF3, obviously there is no IRF3 or less IRF3 phosphorylation. Uh, sting and TBK1 are still being activated because they are upstream of IRF3. 
when you knock down sting, uh, phosphorylation of sting is lost, obviously, but also of TBK1 and RF3. So then we knock down SSC19A1, and again, or we see a very nice effect uh, on sting phosphorylation, which is highly reduced, but also TBK1 and RF3. And this suggests that SSC19A1 uh, acts directly upstream uh, of sting activation. And that suggests that SSC19A1 may act at the plasma membrane as a transporter. And if this, if this is the case, then we, could, we should be able to bypass its depletion uh, by permeabilizing the cells with digitonin, and thereby we should be able to stimulate sting uh, directly into in the cytosol. Uh, so that's what we did. So again, uh, in the absence of digitonin, depleting SLC19A1 reduces sting activation. However, if we permeabilize the cells with digitonin, uh, it restores activation of sting. So it seems to act at the plasma membrane. Um, so next we look, so, so this suggests that, that CGAM can directly, uh, or CDNs can directly bind SOC19A1 uh, if it is the transporter. And to test this, we used several beads that were coated or not with CGAM. And then we added those beads to cell lysase that contain uh, sting and SOC19A1. And sting is a, a control because we know that CGAM should be able to bind sting with very high affinity. And then we isolated the beads and checked for the binding partners. And we can nicely see that indeed the Sephiroth uh, beads labeled with CGAMP can bind sting, but they can also bind SLC19A1. And this binding between CGAMP and the transporter can be disrupted using competitive uh, inhibitors, uh, including CGAMP, unlabeled CGAMP, uh, but also 5-methyl-THF and methotrexate. So, so finally, we, we look directly at uh, the uptake of, uh, of, of cyclic nucleotides, and therefore we used radio-labeled CGAMP in cells that overexpress SLC19A1. And there you can nicely see that it increases the uptake of radio-labeled CGAMP. On the other hand, if you deplete SLC19A1, the uptake is, is reduced. So this is in THP1 cells and similar results were seen in uh, K562 cells. Uh, so a very nice uh, increase in the uptake uh, when you overexpress it and very uh, high depletion when you, uh, when you remove SSC19A1. So then we assess the uptake of CGAMP over time here in the presence of DMSO. Uh, which steadily, uh, so the uptake steadily increases uh, over the course of this experiment. Uh, however, if we add this uh, non-competitive inhibitor of SSC19A1, 5-MAL-THF, we see a very nice reduction in the uptake over time. And the same holds true when we, stim when we incubate the cells with methotrexate or with sulfasalazine. So this was uh, done in THP1 cells, but a similar result were, was seen in human uh, PBMCs. So stimulating the cell of incubating the cells with these uh, competitive and non-competitive inhibitors of SLC19A1, uh, highly reduced uh, CGAMP uptake. So then we want to, to know what the role of SLC19A1 is in vivo. And therefore we first looked ex vivo in um, mouse cells, in this case, mouse spinocytes. So again, we looked at the uptake of CGAMP this time in the presence of DMSO. But if we add 5-methyl-THF, methotrexate, or sulfazalazine, there is no effect uh, on the uptake of CGAMP. So this was kind of uh, well, an interesting result, unexpected result. Uh, so we next want to verify this using a genetic model. So we depleted SLC19A1 from mouse bone marrow-derived macrophages or mouse bone marrow derived dendritic cells. So this is SOC19A1 expression. So those SHRNAs work very well. Uh, and then we stimulated those cells with cyclic dinucleotides and looked at the induction of interferon beta. But it seems that depleting SOC19A1 does not affect uh, the immune response. Uh, and in this case, interferon beta expression in mouse bone marrow derived macrophages, but also not in uh, dendritic cells. 
So these results suggest that SLC 19A1 is not required for a CDN uptake in mice. But also in humans, uh, we found that there was still some residual uh, activation uh, in the complete absence of SSC 19A1, and that's suggested that other transporters uh, may play a role. So we looked at our hit list to, find, to see if we could find other transporters, and it was actually one of them that was enriched in uh, both the uh, synthetic uh, CDN screen and in the CGAM screen, and that was SSC 46A3 which is expressed in the lysosome, and there's not much known besides that it imports an uh, antibody-based drug that targets tumor cells. So when we look at immune activation here uh, by measuring reporter induction, we see that if we deplete uh, SLC46A3, there's a nice reduction in uh, immune activation, not as much as for SLC19A1. Uh, but if we deplete both SLC19A1 and SLC46A3, there's no uh, additional effect. This is for a CGAM, but also for uh, the synthetic CDN, there's no additional effect. Uh, and there's no, nothing going on when you stimulate cells with interferon, suggesting that it's specific for CDNs, the effect that we do see. Uh, so that again uh, suggests that maybe yet other transporters uh, are involved that we haven't found uh, yet. So just to summarize this, this first part of the presentation, I've shown you that, that SLC19A1 is capable of transporting immunoreactive CDNs, and thereby it may potentially be involved in the uptake of extracellular CDNs from the uh, extracellular environment, and those CDNs may be secreted from tumor cells or virus infected cells or from bacteria. Um, and I've also shown that we can uh, inhibit this process using these anti-inflammatory drug, drugs, methotrexate and sulfazalacine, and that they thereby dampen the uh, sting-induced immune response. And it would be very interesting to know if this is also something that happens in patients uh, treated with auto-inflammatory diseases. So since we and, and another group found SSC19A1, uh, there have been a few other reports uh, that uh, suggest that other transporter may also play a role, and one of them is the volume regulated anion channel called LRRC8. And then there's yet another paper that suggests that uh, this transporter P2X7R may play a role in the uptake of CDAMP in uh, certain mouse cells. Uh, we didn't find these two transporters in our screen. Uh, we did find a number of other hits that may not be involved in the transport per se, uh, but may reveal important uh, biology uh, that uh, regulates the Sega sting pathway. And I will give you uh, a few examples in these last few slides. Uh, so one of them is uh, this protein called CCDC140, or the coiled coil domain containing protein 140, which is expressed in higher primates. Uh, we don't know its function, but we do know that some of these CD, CCDC containing proteins uh, are involved in transcription regulation. So we depleted CCDC in TSP1 cells and then stimulate those cells. And we indeed see, indeed see a nice reduction of immune activation in the absence of CCDC 140. And this is also true in the case of CGAMP, but not when we stimulate uh, the cells with interferon beta. So again, showing it's uh, specific for uh, CDNs. So as said, a number of these CCDC proteins regulate transcription. So we wondered if it actually may regulate the transcription of SOC19A1. Uh, and that indeed seems to be the case. So SOC19A1 mRNA expression uh, in cells depleted for CCDC 140 is highly reduced. Uh, and this translates into a reduction in the uptake of CGAMP. Uh, so this preliminary data uh, suggests that um, CCDC 140 depletion uh, blocks transcription of SC19A1 and thereby the uptake of CGAMP. So then we found many other genes that were involved in uh, sting trafficking. Uh, so just to give you a brief background on sting uh, traffic and activation, because it's, it's quite complicated and we still don't know uh, which host factors are involved. But uh, sting is, uh, in the absence of CDNs, it's, it resides in the ER. 
However, after CDN binding, uh, Sting is relocalized via the uh, ER Golgi intermediate compartment to the Trans Golgi network. And it's here where Sting clusters and activates TBK1, which results in downstream immune activation. So one of the uh, genes that we thought it would may play a role uh, was ACBD3, which is a protein involved in membrane trafficking, among other functions. And it was a uh, number eight hit in our screen with, cyclic di uh, with the synthetic cyclic dinucleotide. So we depleted uh, ACBD3 in TSP1 cells and 293T cells that overexpress sting. And we see an, a very nice and robust reduction of immune activation by the synthetic CD, uh, cyclic dinucleotide. Also, when we stimulate the cells with the bacterial cyclic dinucleotide, nice reduction in uh, immune activation. Interestingly, when we stimulate the cells with CGAMP, in THP1 cells, we don't really see any effect. And in 293T cells, uh, we see a very modest effect. So ACB3 definitely affects cyclic di-AMP stimulation and uh, to a lesser extent, CGAMP stimulation, depending on the cell line. So then we want to know if ACBD3 may be involved in the uptake of cyclic dinucleotides. So we again looked at radio labeled uh, CGAMP uptake, but depleting ACBD3 does not reduce uh, the uptake of CGAMP and also not the uptake of um, the bacterial cyclic di A and B. So then finally, uh, we looked uh, at the localization of sting in the presence of ACBD3. And as I said, uh, Sting localizes to the trans Golgi ne network and forms the, uh, these, these clusters, these perinuclear clusters after stimulation. Uh, and that is important for activation. So here's Sting expression in styles, cells that are not stimulated. Uh, then we add uh, CDNs and the Sting forms these, these uh, activation clusters that interestingly completely co-localize with ACBD3. And if we deplete ACBD3 from the cell, so there's still some left, but not, not as much, um, Sting doesn't form these activation clusters anymore. Uh, and that suggests uh, that ACBD3 might be involved in Sting trafficking from the ER uh, to the Golgi compartment. Um, and that's something I'm still uh, studying here in, uh, in Utrecht. So with that, uh, I would like to finish this presentation. I would like to thank all these people, uh, especially the Relay Lab and uh, Josh and Shivam from the University of Washington who did all the radio labeled essays, the Cancer Research Institute for my funding and Adura Biotech because they um, supported us with uh, loads of cyclic dinucleotides. And thank you for your attention.